A little while ago, I made a video showcasing some ways to transfer files to vintage computers. Today, I'm going to do sort of a follow-up video where I showcase a way to transfer files over network using FileZilla. Let's get started. One of the largest benefits to using a program like FileZilla to transfer files to vintage computers is that way you don't have to deal with these old storage mediums like floppy disks, CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs and IDE hard disks. This way it's simple and it's really quick too. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is download the FileZilla server side for Windows. Now this isn't available on Linux or anything but I'm assuming most people will have Windows so yeah. Anyway once that's downloaded we can begin the setup. Now we're going to run the FileZilla setup application. Just click on yes and then click I agree. Next up just leave all this stuff as the default settings and click next. Make sure you're happy with the destination folder where FileZilla will be installed and then click next. Leave the port as the default and on this drop down select the middle option install as service started manually. This way FileZilla won't automatically launch every time your computer is powered on. Click on next and then select start manually. Again, this will stop FileZilla from automatically starting. Click install and then click close. Now, once FileZilla opens up, you'll see this prompt. Leave localhost as it is, leave the port as is, and the password should be password by default. But if you really want, you can type out your own password but I'd recommend just leaving it as is. If you want, you can select always connect to this server. I won't be. Click on connect and sometimes you'll get this error message, but that will give us problems either way, whether you get that message or not. So now we need to click on the server settings. So down here, we have the welcome message. Now, what you wanna do is just click on hide welcome message. You don't need a welcome message and it's gonna give you no benefit. So you you don't need one. Now, passive, passive mode settings is really important. We need to click on use custom port range and then select 2100 to 2100. Now what we're gonna do is click on use the following IP. Now you'll need to find your IP, your local IP address. There's a number of ways you can do this, but the easiest one is just to open command prompt and type in IP config. And you can also use a domain if you want, but we'll just use my local IP. Next, we'll click on security settings and just leave this as it is. Miscellaneous, we don't need to do anything here. Admin interface settings, that's all good. Logging. What we're going to do is enable logging to file. This way we can see what's going on on the server and have it all saved to a file. You can add bandwidth limits if you want so that way users on your file server won't be using too much bandwidth. But I'm only using this for one computer so I'll just leave this as is. FTP over TLS settings. Click on enable FTP over TLS support. Now what we need to do is come down the bottom here and untick these two boxes. This is for security measures, why they're enabled, but connecting to a Windows 98 machine, it won't let you it won't work if you have these boxes ticked. Leave your port as default, because it's easy to remember, and then click on generate new certificate up here. Now, you need to put in your two-digit country code. In my case, it's AU. And you don't need to put in any of this information if you don't feel like it. You sure can if you want. But for this example, I'll just be putting 0, 0, 0, 0, 
zero, zero. And yeah. Now what we're gonna do is click on browse and we're gonna name our certificate. So just call it certificate. And I already have one created, but I'll just replace it. Now what we're gonna do is click generate certificate. And that means it's all good. Certificate generated successfully. Click OK. And then click OK. And it will ask you to enter a valid IP address. So what we're going to do is go back to here and just click on default. Close that. And we'll still get this error. But we need to click back onto here. And use the following IP. I don't know why this is an issue, but that's how to fix it. And now what we're going to do is click disconnect and connect to server. Connect. And there you go. We're connected. Next up, what you need to do is click on edit and then users. We need to add a user so our vintage computer can connect. I'm just going to call this one user so it's easy to remember. Click OK. And then you can add a password if you want, but don't bother. Next, click on shared folder and click add. I've made a shared folder in my C directory called server, so that way it's easy to access. So I've got C slash server, and now we just click on OK. So now we're finished, and it's time to move to the vintage computer. The first step is to plug in an Ethernet cable so our computer can be connected to the network. Most computers of the era have Ethernet. Now, you need to download a really old client version of FileZilla to work on Windows 98. Don't worry, it'll still be compatible. It's just it needs to be old, so it'll work with Windows 98. You need to be using something like version 2, so it'll work properly. I'll leave download links in the description. Once you've got FileZilla working, up the top here, you'll see the Quick Connect option. First, type in your IP address, which you put in for the other computer. Yours will differ. Next, remember how we set up the user account? Put in user. And we don't have a password, so we don't need that. And our port is 990, which is the default one. Now just click on Quick Connect. It should look something like this when it's starting. And then, see how it comes up with this accept certificate thing? This is from the certificate we made earlier. What you're gonna do is just click on always trust this certificate and then click accept. All right, now that that's all done, we're connected. Great. So you can see here, in the remote site how I just have a test folder now this now this right here is our server folder on our main computer now all we have to do is just put files that we want to transfer to the vintage machine in that server folder and then we can access them on the vintage machine now I'm just copying my test file over to the computer for a test so as you can see here it's just taking its sweet time and now if we click refresh you can see the test folder is indeed on my computer so the file transfer is working i've put some files in the folder so now after refreshing it you can see that i've got wolfenstein 3d here all i need to do is just drag it over to the destination folder in this case it's my games folder and as you can see up the top here, it's doing a bunch of stuff, which is good. That means it's copying everything. If you look down the bottom here, you can see the files being transferred as well. I must say, this method of file transfer is really easy, because you can transfer files to vintage machines on the fly. With something like an SD to IDE, you have to power off the machine each time. CD or DVD ROMs, you have to burn them each time. What a waste. Floppy disks, they can't hold anything. So yeah, network file transfer. This is the best way to transfer files. Now that our transfer is done, 
all we need to do is locate our directory where we copied the files to in my case it's my games folder on the C drive and there it is Wolfenstein 3D so yeah now we can run it and perfect our file transfer has worked successfully I hope you enjoyed this video and got some use out of it this method took me a while to figure out but I'm glad I did because it works really well I'll see you next time